Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, sorry for the delay in videos. Been a crazy time right now, as you all know. Please stay safe with this COVID-19 stuff. Um, spend some time in the garage. Get working on your projects. So, as promised, I'm going to be putting in the trunk pan and the uh, trunk extenders. Uh, hopefully we can do this nicely and get things uh, put into place, welded in, tacked in, and uh, we can go from there. So I'll just flip the camera here and I'll show you what uh, we're dealing with. So here we are guys. Uh, we're looking, this is inside the car. As you can tell, this is the back, back seat. So in here, we got a little bit of a gap in here and we can uh, push that down, get that fitted in here, all across the back. So we'll just push down with a little bit of uh, force and uh, get that lined up. We'll uh, clean up, because this is a new panel, it's got the factory epoxy on it. So we gotta clean that up so we can get a good weld. Uh, as I do that, we'll drill holes. That way we can plug weld to the old uh, pan that's in the back here. And uh, we'll work our way into the inner fenders, tack that in, and the trunk extenders. So the first thing we need to do is clean up this ledge in here so we can get uh, the paint removed off of here, drill some holes and plug well. So unfortunately guys, uh, the time lapse on this didn't work. I showed my toolbox for a minute and a half. So we cleaned all this up. Now I can go in here, drill some holes, get the plug welds ready. That one there, we're gonna have to push down, fill that gap. But it's a one piece trunk pan. You can only do this if you're doing inner wheel wells and cord panels. Otherwise, two piece, it will slide in there and you have to run the seam down the middle. So, not sure if you guys can see this or not. Um, I've marked out every two inches, uh, put a pry bar under here so we don't drill into the other one, uh, into the back pan. Now we'll just drill our holes and then we can plug weld that in. So we're going to weld this in, and uh, I took the suggestion from Todd, uh, thank you for uh, subscribing. Um, I do have my helmet, gloves are right here. We'll make sure that this is welded in safely, and uh, we'll uh, proceed from there. So just bear with me, we'll throw some gloves on here, get my pry bar ready, and we'll tack this into place. Actually, not tack, it's going to be permanent. So, we'll take this, grab my pry bar. Really want to focus on this side. Uh, taking my time and looking at this, it's not going to fit that well. But a little bit of manipulation, and we can get it to fit. So we'll take a look here. Yeah, it needs another little bit of thing. So we'll go after the top of the hump. We'll throw another one in there. Move that into place. And we'll tack right there. some more. Sounds like she popped out of place.
also just manipulate this just a little bit more. Go after that one on the other side of the hump. start from the center and work my way out but I noticed a few gaps that need a little bit of attention. So once I find that hole in here So just carry on, I'll weld this up, and we'll make sure that this is a nice solid fit. So here we are guys, I got this welded into the back seat pan. A little bit of a gap left in there, but we can fix that later. So I gotta grind that down a little bit yet. So what I'll focus on now is actually getting the inner wheel welds put into the back seat pan. Get that all spot welded in and then we'll carry on from there we'll put the trunk section extensions in so for those of you that have been watching you've seen me use a spot welder this thing is a brute to move around uh, we'll come in here we'll throw a few spot welds in I marked out where the end of the back seat pan meets the inner wheel well so we'll weld that in we'll use a spot welder Hopefully we get a good connection. We'll throw that in there. Right up in here, beyond this point, is the new pan. I will have to clean that up. I, no, for some reason, I neglected to clean that before we did that. But uh, we'll see if we can get a good weld. So this brings this uh, spot welder up. We'll maneuver this into place. Like I said, this is a heavy unit. So we'll go as deep as we can in here. Clamp her down. That actually worked better than I thought it was going to. So we'll come down a little bit further, roughly about two inches. I want to hear the hum. I want to see the red mark in there. Make sure that we're getting a good weld. That one's gonna fly, so we'll come back up. Same area as what we were before. Maneuver that around, make sure that we get good ground in there. We had a spot. There we go. That one in. And it's not going to cooperate. Now ah, we'll come up here a little bit further. Put this one in this spot. Move up a little bit further. And throw another one in. I've already done the passenger side and well, the driver's side is working a lot better than what the passenger side did. Must clean this side. So let's try it down here again. I hit that switch. Hopefully we hear a buzz. And I just hear that. So let's go up here again. We might have to plug weld that one just because it's a little more awkward of a spot for the spot welder to get in. So there we go. We're welded into the inner wheel well to the back seat support. Down here, I think I'm gonna have to put a plug weld or two in here. 
just my spot welder is not going to reach unless I drop the springs and the rear axle. We'll clean that up and we'll uh, carry on with the trunk extensions. So guys, here we are at the back of the car now. I'm uh, going to start working on these trunk extensions. I've gone ahead and put the driver's side in. Um, a couple things I realized when I did so, when I put the quarter panel in, I welded all this in nice and solid. But the problem was is that I needed to be able to pull the quarter out in order to get the trunk extension in. So I had to drill out those spot welds, reposition, get the uh, trunk extension placed in here as best as I can for right now. It's looking pretty good. Things are lining up. We've got a little bit of a gap up in the corner here. We can, uh, we can address that with a hammer and a dolly. Um, <clears throat> down here, let me grab the light so we can see. The camera just doesn't like it with no light. Down in here, so I've got all sorts of clamps in there. Yeah, you can see the rotten frame rail. That's going to be addressed at a later time once I can get the parts. So down in here, we got things clamped in. The trunk extension is actually looking really good. So what we'll do, we'll just get this uh, a couple more clamps in here. We'll uh, maybe start welding this in. And then I'll show you how, what we need to do to fit the passenger side. Um, it is a little bit of manipulating. We do have to bend, not really bend things, but uh, move things out of the way so we can get it to fit down there. All right, so the, for the most part, I'm happy with what we've got clamped in here. I think I've got every clamp that I own other than my big C clamps. So everything in here, it's lined up. Um, we gotta squeeze some together, make it fit. But for the most part, I think we're ready to tack this in. Here we are, guys. We're at the workbench again. Uh, we got to do a little bit of modifications to the uh, trunk pan for the driver's side. Uh, in here, we have the uh, gas pickup, breather tube, whatever you want to call it, uh, but we don't have a hole in the trunk extension. So we've got to put that in, we'll mark this out, we'll get this set up, and uh, we'll push, the, uh, cut a hole in here, then we'll install the trunk extension. So I'm just going to take this part, grab my marker, this is off the old uh, inner fender, so we'll put this, we'll line it up as close as we possibly can. We'll mark this out. Nice thing with this marker, it does show up on the black epoxy coating. I don't know if you can see that. I'll bring that a little bit closer so you can. So we got a nice mark on here. But we got to remember that we can't follow that mark because the fold in here, the bend on this, there's the fold on this one. We got the bend on this side. So we got to adjust so that we can cut this just a little bit that way. So I've got my drill ready. We'll drill a hole so we can get the jigsaw in there. So somewhere in here is just a starting point. And that's where we're going to start with the jigsaw. So we'll cut this out. We'll move it off just probably about an eighth of an inch just so that we can get that uh, that radius so we can fit our tube back in. So I've marked this out. It's a little bit shaky, but there is a, a secondary mark on there. I don't know if you guys can see that very well. We'll put a little bit of sunshine on there. So we'll just cut this out. And uh, nice thing is, is that the tube has got a flange on it. So the flange will actually fit further out on the part. So I'm not too, too awful worried about it. We'll put some uh, seam sealer in there and uh, we'll make sure that that's got a nice, uh, just, it's weather tight. Well guys, it's not a pretty cut. It's not by any means something that's factory. 
Uh, they would have stamped this from the factory, but let's run our lines in. We'll see how it fits. Make sure everything goes through. Looks like we're gonna have to do a little bit of trimming on there. That's a little bit tight. So I'll trim that up and we'll see what we get. So I trimmed that up. Let's try this again. We'll run these hoses through. And that's exactly what we're after. So that part will sit in there nicely. We got a little bit of adjustment if we need to. Um, I don't surmise once we get it into place, we'll throw some self topping screws in the holes that are in here. Uh, we'll get this into place. I got some cleaning up to do on this so we get a nice weld. Uh, but other than that, I think we're ready to go. We're looking at the back end of the car. So I went ahead and I dropped the rear end and the springs um, just to give a little bit more room for when we put in the inner, inner um, trunk extensions. There we are, sitting over there. When I took this out, I discovered, okay, we got a broken spring. You can see that. So the springs will have to be replaced. Also, the studs on the back of the shackle at the front, most of those broke off. Funny thing is, it's the same one on both sides. I got full thread, the rest of them all broke. So we'll have to replace that. We'll have to replace the springs. In the meantime, I pulled the shocks out as well. This gives us a little bit more room under here. As you can see, there's lots of room now. Get that rear end out. So what we'll do now, I'll set up the camera for a better view so we can get the inner trunk extensions in and get those welded in. The other side's already welded in. I have a few little tweaks I need to do on that yet, but uh, I think once we get those tweaks worked out, we'll be able to fit the rear valance. I wanted to get the rear end out because it was gonna be kind of a pain to be able to move them shackles and everything out of the way so that we could install the uh, rear valance afterwards, new bolts, new uh, bushings, everything for the springs. We'll get those installed. All right, guys. So I've cleaned up all the edges on the trunk extension. That way we know we get a good weld. All contacts are clean. So what we'll do right now, uh, we'll see if we can get this trunk extension in here, get it fit. Uh, once we get it fitted and it's in there proper, then we'll weld it in. So let's see what we can do here. So here's the trunk extension. We got our hole cut in there. Everything's good to go. Oh, sorry. Got our hole cut in there. So let's slide it in here. Close the other side. The other side was a bit of a pain to put in, but we'll see what this side does for us. Like I said in the other, in a previous uh, segment there, is that uh, I had to cut some of the welds out to get this to slide in. So, let's slide this into place. And it's not a very luxurious thing to do. We've got a few elements that we've got to move out of place. Wiggle it around. And if you can see, uh, can't see in there. So let's bring our camera around. So down in here, a little bit of a spot that's giving us a pickle. So we'll uh, manipulate that just a little bit. Let's get this out of the way. So down in here, the trunk extension sitting a little bit higher. So we'll move that around. We'll get that to fit in there. So guys, um, I started fitting the passenger side trunk extension. I really wasn't that happy with it. Uh, so what I've done is actually take the, uh, I, I pulled it out and I took a closer look at uh, the driver's side. And again, I really wasn't happy with some of the fit on it. So I ended up drilling out some of the welds on here. I'll show you what I did and the process that we're sitting at right now. So here we are under, uh, under the car again. So in here, I cut some of these welds out so I can manipulate this a little better because up in here where the frame, actually the frame extension, I guess you'd call it, meets the inner uh, trunk extension, right in here was a very, very large gap. So what I've done actually is take tie strap in here. I got a jack in here pushing down on it. So I've tie strapped off of my trunk uh, latch 
all the way down into here. I've tied it off down underneath where the spring shackle used to be. And I've gotten it squeezed in a lot better than what it was. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld that in there and then we'll play with the passenger side again. So here we are guys, I got this all tight in here. Uh, everything sucked in. Previously I did have a gap going, it wasn't positioned properly. Let me get this in here a little better for you. It wasn't positioned properly up and down. It wasn't uh, there, I had about three quarters inch gap back and forth in here. So with the ratchet strap and the uh, scissor jack, we pushed everything into place. So what we'll do now, we'll come in here and we'll do a little, we'll fill in these welds that I drilled out, particularly where the quarter panel meets the rear tail section. Uh, drilled those out so we can get the trunk extension to fit in. So we'll go ahead and we'll weld that up and then we'll uh, play around with the passenger side. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll weld those up. Weld it up in here. Of course, we got to grind down some of these welds, but it's in there nice and secure. So down in here, we got these ones in as well. So let's play with the passenger side now. So over here on the passenger side, here's the uh, trunk extension for the passenger side. Um, if you remember, it didn't fit down in uh, past the inner wheel wells. Um, I manipulated it a little bit. I played with it, tried to get it fit, and it just wouldn't fit properly. What I found was this part right here where it meets up with the outer inner wheel well it was pushing up on it shoving it forward and actually pushing the quarter panel out of line so it was pushing the quarter panel back in here is where the quarter panel needs to sit it was basically where it is right now well we can't have that we want to get a little bit closer in that um, again we'll use a ratchet strap we'll uh, push and pull where we need to and we'll get this lined up. We'll get that welded in. 
But for now, what I gotta do, I have to take these relief cuts and put a little bend in here. I gotta flatten this one out. We'll get this off right here so you can see it a little better. So right in here, gotta bend this down just a little bit. The inner wheel well is sitting right about here. So if we can bend these all at uh, say a 90 degree, bend them down so we can get in uh, nice and uh, tight. That way it'll fit a lot better. It won't push quarter panel out and uh, it'll look right. All right, so just use an adjustable wrench, just a small one. I just put it at the depth that I wanted to bend at. Took the material and bent it a little bit. So this isn't a finished product. So it's just a test fit. We'll see how this fits into the uh, cavity that we want to fill. Um, it is a little bit jagged in here, but we can weld that up. We can make it uh, look like factory. It won't be close, but it'll, it'll fit a lot better than what it is right now. So after putting the relief cuts in this, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to place this in. We're going to see how it fits. If we got to pull it back out and bend those just a little bit more, we'll bend them some more. And yes, we're looking through the rear tail light down into the wheel well. How you doing guys? So let's do that. We'll move that around. It probably will get a little bit noisy because well, it's 10. So here, we'll just throw that up there. We'll check it out. Found going from the bottom is a little better. So this is just placed in here. It's not a uh, finished product by any means. So it's looking all right. Gonna have to push down in a few spots. Gonna have to manipulate it. But I think those relief cuts work pretty well. It's got it in here tight. Enough room that we can probably bend it back. I'll show you guys that in just a moment here. Um, just want to kind of move around. So. Give me a few moments, we'll move this around, we'll uh, see how we can get it to fit, and I'll show you what we got. Here's the first initial fit. Um, again, we gotta move some stuff, we gotta manipulate it. Put up in here, a little bit of a gap, you can see all the way up in here. But we're sitting good for the tail light. In here, we gotta squeeze that in a little bit more, probably do a ratchet strap like we did on the other side. Just bear with me, there's gonna be a bang. I'll grab my trusty light here, and we'll show you the underside where we put the relief cuts in. So let's go underneath, we'll take a look here. So here we go, there's the inner trunk uh, extension. So yeah, we're not uh, we're not sitting too well right now. Put some clamps and some maneuvering. We'll get this to fit better. So up in here is where we put the relief cuts. This is up against the inner wheel well that goes uh, into the quarter panel, goes into the trunk pan. So we have several different elements that we have to manipulate and get this to fit properly. So I'll go ahead and fit this. We'll move things around. Uh, it's sheet metal. It's quite forgiving. So don't be afraid to uh, go in there and just bend, move, whatever. Your biggest worry right now is to make sure that the lines on your quarter panel all line up because, well, who's gonna be looking into your trunk? You. You're the guy that's gonna be looking into your trunk. So if you're happy with it, you build it. So I'll go ahead, we'll maneuver that around, we'll clamp it in, I'll show you the welding process once we do. Um, yeah, we'll go from there. All right guys, so here we are. So I grabbed the rear valance just so that we can do some lineup on this. The driver's side's looking really good. We got that, so it fits 
the lines going down. Of course, I gotta do some cleanup on this. Inside here, let me grab my light. Inside here, we got things lining up. Got a little bit of a gap near the inner wheel wells, but we can uh, manipulate the metal, get that fitting better. Up in here, things are fitting good. Underneath, we'll slide under here. Sorry for the camera roll. We'll get under here. We got everything clamped in. We bent those reliefs over so it fits better. Got a little bit of a gap right there, but we can fill that. We'll uh, clamp this all into place. And the trouble spot that I had on the other side, it's fitting really good. So we'll have to manip manipulate some of this where we need to to make it fit. But I'm quite happy with this. We'll weld this in and we'll call it a day. Hey guys, so I think next time around, I'm gonna get this all welded in. Uh, we'll show you the finished product. Uh, like I showed you, there is manipulating to do on the uh, panels itself. Uh, it's an AMD quarter, uh, quarter panel. Uh, I think uh, good mark inner uh, wheel wells. So the stampings are a little bit different. You'll run into that as you mix and match different manufacturers. As you use your parts, you're gonna have to make them work. So that's what we did here. We tweaked, we moved, we manipulated. Things are fitting well. We'll get this welded in. Um, I think next time around, well, I'll clean up the fuel tank. We'll get the fuel tank straps uh, positioned, tacked into place. There's a lot of holes we've got to drill, some, some welding to do in the floor pan on the trunk. Uh, I'd like to wrap up the back end of this as soon as I can. Uh, that way we can focus on the front end, get the front fenders cleaned up, figure out what we got to do with those, doors, etc. Uh, we got a long road to go here. Thank you for uh, subscribing. Enjoy the videos. Please like, comment. Um, we'll go from here and we'll see uh, the finished product sometime down the line. Thanks. Bye.